Good morning, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Hi. Oh. Praise the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Amen. My dear, dear sweet brethren, sisters, The Lord reward thee. The Lord make all blessings abound upon you. And those who have cast in all that they had, the Lord reward you and bless you. Praise the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. And may the Lord reward you so mightily that there be not room for you to receive it. Praise be unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for his unspeakable gift. And that gift is what? Himself. The God of all. All. A-L-L. -L. You know, there's a detergent out there by the name of all. And the enemies of our Lord, the Jesuits and their coadjutors, um, they say to see God in all things. But see, when the Jesuits and their coadjutors say that, um, they twist that and pervert it. Because remember, unto the enemies of our Lord, the end justifies the means. So that means that these people can commit sin if it means forwarding the, the, the cause of their God, the little G God of this world, Satan. But see, the reality is that God is all. Is he not? So get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Colossians chapter one. This video is going to be, number one, I have to mention that um, this video is a collaborated effort. A friend who sticketh closer than a brother. Did, did, did you read the song, uh, the uh, proverb for today? Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. But uh, this is a collaborated effort. This is a collaborated effort. But um, yeah, none of this is done just by hello. No, absolutely not. But the God of all, he is the he is either God of all or God of nothing. The longer that you walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the more you know that there is no such thing as a coincidence. Coincidences do not happen. They don't. They don't. From the mighty unto the mundane, nothing happens by coincidence. It says in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, time and chance happeneth unto all. But who allows those chances? Hmm? Colossians chapter 1. Let's read from verses 16 on to verse 20. For by him were all things created. By him who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That includes even the evil for the day of judgment. Look at that. All things were created by him and for him. 
And because he had pleasure in us, meaning he created us just because he wanted to, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. And the church is the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Not a building, and certainly not Roman Catholicism. That's Satan's church, okay? And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, spirit, soul, body, the Godhead. One God, spirit, soul, and body. And having made peace through the blood of his... The blood of his cross. Yeah. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. He is the God of all. Calvinists will say sovereign. Sovereign. But see... Uh, find me sovereign in the authorized version of the scriptures. Find it for me. Okay? But he is God of all things. He is God of all things. He allows both good and evil. God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is not this helpless being sitting there like, oh, no, nothing escapes him. He knows all things. He knows everything. And everything serves a purpose. That's what I mean. There's no such thing as a coincidence. Because, go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to read the verse, Romans chapter 8. Just one verse. You know what verse in Romans chapter 8 we're going to read. Verse 28. And we know that all things... Oh, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Now see, you're not of the church of the living God. The God that you love, that you say you love, is yourself. Not the God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verse 28 is for us, the church of the living God. His body. You who are lost, you coadjutor devils, this, this verse holds nothing to you. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The called, saved. And it says, all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And of course, we got to go to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a little refresher here, okay? This video, like I said, is a collaborated effort, and it's going to encompass several things. There's also going to be some expository done in this video as well, okay? Also, we're going to be doing some of that, but let's, let's brush up on a few things, shall we? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Remember, all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15 on to verse 26. Of course, you are expected to follow me along. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. What is good? 
aligning your life according to the scriptures. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore in times of prosperity and in times of brokenness. Pray without ceasing. Do you pray? In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank you for the affliction. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the persecution. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the mercy. In everything, ties in with rejoice evermore. Quench not the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? By not taking heed thereto, according to that word. You, you, you got to remember, brethren, as you do, God is not forcing you to do anything. Neither is Satan. Okay? He wants you to make the right choice according to his word. You have to remember that. Don't forget it. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. Everybody says it backwards. But there it is. Spirit, soul, and body. Small point. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. What does it say here? Pray without ceasing, verse 17. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. All the brethren with a holy kiss. The all of God. The all of God which is being made so trivial by the hirelings today. Now, go to this, of course, like I said, we're, look, we're looking at familiar verses. This is refresher. This is refresher for what we are going to be getting into. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, on to verse 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, Paul right there is addressing who? the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Okay? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Beginning at verse 12 on to the end. Of the chapter. 
Romans chapter 5, verses 12, on to the close of the chapter. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, and by one sinner destroyeth much good. One sinner destroyeth much good. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Go find that. But what does this mean? Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, because Adam and Eve were first created to live forever. But because they disobeyed God's commandment in the Garden of Eden, and ate of the fruit of the tree, okay, the actual fruit itself is not as significant as the fact that they disobeyed God's commandment. Okay? And because they did that, you know, Eve went and got the fruit, gave it to Adam. We should have been like smacking that out of our hands. Like, what are you doing? But no, he did not. Okay? And then, as Satan said to them, their eyes were open. They knew they were naked. Their eyes were open. They could be as gods, knowing good and evil. Because there was an innocency there, see. But see, upon being disobedient, sin entered into the world. So by one man, right there in verse 12, that's talking about Adam and his actions in the Garden of Eden. Verse 13, For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. The law of God is to show you, like the Ten Commandments, that you're a sinner. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. Okay? That's what the law is there for. You would not know sin except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. That's the purpose of the law. Okay? Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam. There, naming Adam to uh, tell you who he's talking about in verse 12. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Figure of him that was to come. See, by Adam's transgression, in came death, sin. But by that next man, let's keep reading. <clears throat> but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. God himself, dying on the cross, shedding his blood on that cross to make the perfect atonement for sin, whereas animal blood only covered it, okay? <clears throat> but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, unmerited favor, the better blessing the lesser, okay? And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Let's keep reading. And not as it were, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses on to justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundant abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign by shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ therefore as by the offense of one judgment came came upon all men to condemnation we're all born sinners even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift 
came upon all men onto justification of life. Now, notice that it says, the free gift came upon all men onto justification of life. God would have all men to be saved. Okay? To come to repentance and contrition. God wants all men to be saved. But see, you got guys, uh, Calvinists, guys like MacArthur and his little yes man, Justin Peters, who believe in the elect and non-elect. Okay? But God would have all men to be saved. And it says right there, look at first. Okay, it says right there, okay, the free gift came upon all men. It's there. It's there for all men. God would have all men to be saved. But see, you have to come to him on his terms, not your own. And his terms are brokenness of your self-righteousness and contrition, godly sorrow, knowing it's your fault that he went to that cross. But see, that is available to all men, even to you devils. But you have chosen against it. Let's, keep, let's continue reading, okay? For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness. Be, be made righteous, excuse me. Note the difference here of all and many in these two verses, okay? For all have sinned, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, amen. But notice how it says again in verse 18, therefore as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. And here in verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. But it says all in verse 18. What does that mean? Well, remember here what it says in, about the law in verse 13. For until the law, sin was not, was, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. What is that making a reference on to? Being made aware, knowing that you have sinned against the holy God. Okay? Being made aware, it's like, my sins put him on that cross? It's talking about an awareness of sin. Okay? That's what the difference, the contrast between all and many thus far in verses 18 and 19. Do you see that? Okay? But now in verse 19, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And then in verse 18, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Whereas in verse 19, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness. Again, all and many. Do you see that um, distinction there? God would have all men to be saved, but narrow is the way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. Well, broad is the way. And many go in that way, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Because they want to go in on their own terms, not his. Do you see the contrast there? What that's talking about? Hmm? Do you see that? The difference between all and many here in verse 19, verse 18 and 19? You see that? Verse 20, More, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. You're without excuse. For by law is the knowledge of sin. I had not known that I wasn't supposed to covet unless the law said, thou shalt not covet. That's in Romans chapter 7. Go read that. Go find that. Okay. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, 
Grace did much more abound. Now that doesn't give us a license to go on sinning or anything like that. No, because then you got to read uh, Romans chapter 6. And if I can remember, I'll put the expository video on Romans chapter 6 in this video. Okay? Okay? Very important. But remember, God would have all men to be saved. There's that grace abounding because he would have all men to be saved. See? That at verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So see, the God of all has given to all men the opportunity to come to him to be saved because he would have all men to be saved truly the God of all whereas by Adam's transgression all were made sinners the God of all has given all of you a way to escape but see the catch is you have to come to him on his terms see these Jesuit coadjutors again as you know they go over scriptural repentance and they twist it and tweak it to fit their own end so that once we, the Church of the Living God, is redeemed and taken out of the way so all these devils can have their free course, okay? Um, so those of you who are left behind can take the mark of the beast and be damned to hell, okay? That's the whole purpose of why these guys are doing this. But see, the God of all has given you a way out of it. But he ain't forcing it on you like what Calvin teaches. See. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Talking about the God of all. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Beginning at verse 6. Now, when our Lord saves you, brethren, you can't hold back. You have to, you know, when the Lord saves you, you, you really need to dive in head first. It's scary. Yes. It is scary. Yes. But see, you have to have faith in what our Lord has done. Okay? And our Lord will provide for you. But you have to go in head first. You have to dive in head first. You have to submit everything of yourself. And see, we're, you see, we're still in the flesh. And hence, that struggle between flesh and and spirit. But like um, like in the one previous video, you have to propose in your heart to dive in head first, to give everything of yourself unto the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now, people like to equate this to money and stuff like that. Yes, it's talking about that kind of necessity. Yes, it is. But you need to think a little deeper than that, dear brother and sister. Okay? It's a little deeper than that. Let's continue. Every man, according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Twofold. This says, if you're going to give, what does it say there? Not grudgingly or of necessity. What does that mean? Uh, tithing is not a requirement for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? It is not. For God loveth a cheerful giver. When you got these bozos in these church buildings, 
taking the offerings and talking to you out of, out of Malachi and stuff like that, trying to scare you. Okay, no. Tithing is not a requirement for us today. Okay? It is not. Don't fall for that. But also, put this into the equation. Are you afraid to give yourself wholly unto the God of all, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Look at that. P propose in your heart to let it all go and dive in. So uh, I got the notification on one of the comments in the previous video about how a brother for the first time or something like that went, you know, went maskless. Yay! Praise the Lord! Or whatever. And that he got uh, persecuted for it or something like that. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay? Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity or of necessity. Now, our reasonable service is to conform ourselves to the scripture and to abstain from every from all appearance of evil. Absolutely. Okay? But knowing what he has done for you after after what you had done to him. Are you facing Things grudgingly like, oh, because I, the Lord saved me, I got to do this. Again, get, get beyond just giving, okay? Get beyond that. Think of your daily, every second walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Think about that. You know? Like Safra, uh, Safra and whatnot, um, her husband and whatnot, the guy and her husband who um, kept back a little in the book of Acts and lied. And Peter's like, why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? And, he, and the Lord dropped him dead. After all the Lord has done for you, Church of the Living God, hi, okay? Who are we to hold back? But to put our lives down at his whim, whatever it may be, at his beck. See, th see, this goes deeper than just that kind of stuff, brethren. Are you putting your, your life out there as a cheerful giver for the one who did everything for you? Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things. Get a load of those all sufficiency in all things. Get a load of that. Okay? May abound to every good work. Hold your place here and go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, these works are referring to the works of the law. Okay? It's referring on to the works of the law. Lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Remember how we looked at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17? Okay? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them to change life, you know. Conforming ourselves to the scripture, which is our reasonable service. Go 
back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 9, as it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. His righteousness. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Increase the fruits of your righteousness. See, when you give unto others, okay, when you do that, it's fruit unto your account. And as I said at the beginning of this video, may your fruit blossom and bloom and be ever sweet to your taste. The Lord reward thee. Verse 11, check this out. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. To all bountifulness. See, you, now, again, get beyond your thinking of just tangible giving. Get beyond that. But put yourself there. Giving yourself wholly unto the Lord who gave all for you. Okay? I know that there are several of you out there that are holding back. And I'm not talking about giving tangible, tangible stuff. I'm talking about you holding back from giving your all unto the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Get beyond just what you see as far as what your hands have. It's deeper than that, brethren. Okay? Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. And in everything give thanks. For the administration of the service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. You're going to note the significance of this as further as we continue, okay? As we continue, okay? Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. And right here, thanks be unto God, for his unspeakable gift. Unspeakable gift. God who has given us all. Has done all. For we. The church of the living God. And for you lost people. It's there for you. You just need to be broken. And contrite. And see, those who preach against that are puffing up your flesh because why? Just believe. Saving yourself by what you do rather than the Lord saving you. Very dangerous. And think about this. That, this, this isn't for you, brethren, sisters. Think about this. You're spitting on the Lord, actually, by you saving yourself, by just believing. You count his all as nothing. Who, who really blasphemes the Lord with your just believe? Yeah. Yeah. Now go to Philippians. Go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 on to verse 20. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 on to verse 20. 
Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Fruit that may abound. To your account for God loveth a cheerful giver okay now Paul is talking about the things for his necessity yes but also brethren like I said get deeper it's deeper than that okay it is far deeper than that okay if you're giving to people just with the the purpose of to expect something back, you, you've missed it entirely. You've missed it entirely. Because God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay? But if you give, not, not just stuff that you have in your hands, yourself. If you first give yourself, How may the Lord use that once you have fully given yourself unto the Lord? How many of you are truly holding back? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. You know, we the, the time wouldn't suffice for uh, me to talk to of brethren that I know of. I, spin, I, I think of a brother of mine who, who shares my who shares some of my blood, you know, <laughs> of my kindred, <laughs> who has, who is truly giving all of himself unto the Lord. You know, I, I still, when I think about that, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. But um, how many of you are holding back yourself totally from the God of all who has given you all and all he wants out of you is your all and that's something verse 18 but i have all and abound i am full having received of epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to god but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, your daily need. But he is also the God of all comfort. The God of all joy. Yes, this is talking about things you hold in your hands. Yes, but come on, brethren, it is deeper than that. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go to First Chronicles. Let's look at a very, very, very telling account of all of this, of what we're talking about, the God of all. From the mouth of David, we want 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Now with what we have looked at, put this into the equation. Think about this. Okay? Think about this. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, we will be reading verses 10 on to verse 17. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10, on to verse 17. Therefore, wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. 
is uh, verse 11 is going to sound very familiar, especially for some of you Catholics. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the heaven and in the earth is thine stop 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 okay stop right there let that just state let that ruminate a little bit okay the God of all, the heavens, the heavens, the earth, your, your breath is all of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He gave all for you on the cross because you sinned against him and you put him on that cross. And he has done all for you. You just need to come to him broken and contrite. That's not that difficult once, once you are broken, you know. It's not. You make it hard because you're still self-righteous. And thinking, I, I can do better. said he's either the God of all or the God of nothing look at that okay thine O Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all. You know, Satan is the little g, God of this world, because the Lord has allowed him to do that for judgment. Nothing is getting by the Lord's knowledge. Nothing is going on without his say-so. He is truly the God of all. How many, how many of you make him the God of some things? Verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now are therefore our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. And remember, there is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And look at now, look at verse 14. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. Remember how King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4, if you ever did read that? Um, I, I, I know you did, I'm just saying. But um, before the Lord broke him, he's like, Look at this kingdom that I and majesty that I have built by my power. Right? Then the Lord bro uh, broke him. Look at what David here is saying. But who am I? We're dust and ashes. And what is my people? The apple of his eye, he's referring to the Jews. Okay? That we should be able to offer so willingly after the sort. Now right here, brethren. For all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. 
Now, stop right there, okay? Now, think about this. Stop, okay? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. If the Lord didn't want you to eat today, do you think he could, is powerful enough to keep you from eating? If the Lord doesn't want you to breathe today, boy, um, he's definitely powerful enough to take that from you. The Lord doesn't want you to walk, speak, think. You see, so many of these devils, they take what the Lord has given them and they use it for evil. They take what is all of his and pervert it. Why do you think their damnation is just? But think about this. There ain't nothing that you have that the Lord has not allowed you to have. I don't care who you is or who you think you is. Remember King Solomon mentioned about those who heap up gold and silver to give unto those who need it or to uh, he, he knows not who's going to get it after he's dead? You know? Think about that. Think about this. Brethren. And why do you want to think about this? Uh, this ought to terrify you. The fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay. If God holds everything in his hand, including and if this even this is for you wicked devils out there. Okay? The fact that he has given you today breath, okay, go ahead, by the way, uh, go ahead and puff on that cigarette of yours, okay? But for you devils, okay, um, he has given you breath today, that's his long suffering, because he would have all men to come to repentance, he would have all men to be saved. At any given moment, at his choice, he could take it away. And everything you got has been allowed to be given unto you. The minute you start saying, well, I worked hard and got this. If the, if the Lord didn't want you to have it, if the Lord didn't allow you to have that for judgment against you, for you concerning you devils, you wouldn't have anything. You wouldn't have nothing. Verse 15. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee and house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. Get, get a load of that. Get a load of that. Brother and sister, as you know, as what we're looking at, when, we, when you think about this, how thankful, what, what depth of thanksgiving in everything give thanks, because all is of his hand. What he has given you, giving back unto him, for the furtherance of the gospel and for the necessity of saints, 
Whether that be what literally be in your hand, or it be you finally giving yourself wholly unto the Lord. What would happen if those of you out there who uh, keep holding, who are holding back and haven't d dived headfirst into this, how much, I mean, how would the Lord use you? He could use anybody of the church of the living God. Amen, amen. But the point is, are you holding back? Why are you holding back? Why are you holding back? Has he not given you all things? Verse 17, I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. Willingly. See, again, you know, Calvin... Uh, Calvinism is just another means of self-glorification. Because if you're one of the elect, you're one of the elect, right? Yeah? Yeah. Meaning without your, without your will, without your choice. Yeah. God doesn't want a robot. God don't want a robot, dear friend. Now, now here's where I'm going to use the second set of scriptures. Here's where the expository is going to come in, okay? Go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50, okay? Now, we're not going to exposit this entire psalm, okay? Pretty much, but not all of it. Not all of it, okay? Like I said, this is a collaborated effort. Let us read Psalm 50, and as you can see, going too fisted for this, <laughs> okay? Psalm 50, we begin. The mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken, and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, for salvation is of the Jews, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined in him was light, and his light was the light of men. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him, devouring all things. Uh, referencing onto his second coming, obviously. Verse 4, he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And look right across the page, if that's where it is in your set of scriptures, to, uh, to not Isaiah, to Psalm 50, to, uh, to Psalm 51, okay? Now, hold on, I got to get here in my uh, uh, second set of scriptures here, okay? Come on, fingers work with me, I beg your pardon, okay? Look at that verse 5 again. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, Psalm 51, verses 16 on to verse 17. For thou dost desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. Now, in verse 16, and I also have an expository video on Psalm 51 as well, okay? Um, the sacrifices he's referencing are not you giving yourself wholly unto the Lord. No, he's, uh, that's referring to actual animal sacrifices. Okay, Verse 17. 
The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Brokenness and contrition. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay? Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? Fret not thyself because of evil doors, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Don't let him in. We're reading on to verse 7. Okay? Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Okay? Delight thyself in the Lord. Okay? Not in things of the world. Okay? Not in merely what he gives, but in him himself. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Talking about, remember, diving head first. Okay, verse 5 again. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Verse 6. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And let's read verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Now go to Isaiah chapter 66. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, one more stop uh, in the Psalms. Psalm 52 or 55, one verse in Psalm 55. One verse in Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer, suffer the righteous to be moved. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Trembleth. Sorrowful spirit, contrite. Sorrowful for what you did to him. And the fact that he has given all unto you. have to come to him broken and contrite, dear friend. You have to believe what he has written. You know, tremble at his word. Let's continue in Psalm 50. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. See, 
when the Lord saves you and changes your life by telling you, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, it's for your benefit. It's for your profit. Profit. Okay? It is for your profit. All sin is harmful for you. There is no such thing as a light sin. And the way he will guide you is for your benefit and for your better, betterment. Go to Isaiah chapter 55. Go to Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 on to verse 9. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? Oh! Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come, come ye, buy and eat, yea, Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. What is good? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What is good? The authorized version of the scriptures, his word. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is king of the Jews. Okay? And when he come back at his second coming with us, his church, his body, okay? When he come back with us, he's going to reign as king in the kingdom of heaven at Jerusalem, as king of the Jews. Okay? Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. And all you lost people who may see this, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Thinking that you're a good person, and that you can save yourself, that you can do better. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, sometimes we will go through things, and at first we won't understand why the Lord allowed us to go through that. But then when you look back at it, the Lord will reveal, usually through the scriptures, or um, why he allowed certain things to happen to you. That it may abound unto thanksgiving in the end. Continuing in Psalm 50. I will take note uh, at verse 9. Okay. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine. And the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving. 
and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble, I, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers are they that made thee waste, shall go forth of thee. Okay? Now go to Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. Hold on, brethren. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Micah chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 9. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? With that said, now, verse 16 on to verse 17 in Psalm 50. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Isaiah 66, verses 3 and 4. See how we did that? Isaiah 66, verses 3, on to verse 4. Isaiah 66, verses 3 on to verse 4. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. An ox was an offering. They uh, sacrificed oxen. Okay? He that sacrificeth, sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. Okay? These are offerings that were offered unto the Lord. Okay? Under the law. Okay? But note the comparison. Okay? He that offereth an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Now look at that, okay? He that killeth an ox, as if he slew a man. As if he slew a man. Today in this dispensation, okay, sacrifices are not there because the ultimate sacrifice for our sins has been made. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who shed his blood to shed uh, on the cross to atone for your sins, okay? Okay? He that sacrificeth the lamb, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was the lamb without spot, okay? As if he cut off a dog's neck. 
He that offereth an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Note too that also in the scriptures, a dog is likened unto a man, and a swine also is feminine. The dog returneth unto his vomit again, and the sow to her wallowing in the mire. Really? Now read verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. See, the perfect sacrifice has been made, okay? And verse 3 is talking about those who still want to work for their salvation. And the works there in verse 3 are according to the law because, again, sacrificing an ox, sacrificing a lamb, an oblation, an incense, okay? Those were all types of sacrifices given within the law of Moses. You go fact check that, okay? Again, this goes into uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, it's the works of the law, okay? That's the works that are, admoni are, are spoken against in Ephesians chapter 2, by the way, okay? Hence, you're saving yourself by what you do by believing. Okay? Now go to, let's read verse 18 here in Psalm 50. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 14 in John chapter 10. Look at verse 18 again. When thou sawest a thief, a thief, then thou consentest with him and hast been partakers with adulterers. John chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Climbeth up some other way. You know, like jumping over scriptural uh, brokenness and contrition, repentance, and twisting it, coming in some other way. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Who is the door? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Calleth his own sheep by name, come up hither. Okay? Okay? And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Why is that? Because he just gave reference to the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away. Okay? That's, that's what he was referring to there. Let's continue. Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, answering his own thing, what he uh, put here. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. And what is a thief? 
Someone who climbs up another way. And what does it say here in verse 18? When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Think about that. They saw a thief and they consented with that. And the thief climbeth up some other way. Meaning you don't want to submit to the truth of the gospel. You want to skip over being broken of your self-righteousness. And having true godly sorrow for what you did to the Lord. Not mere godly sorrow for that you're going to hell. Oh, of course. That's part of it. Yes. The fear of the Lord. Yes, of course. But see, godly sorrow is you having sorrow for what you did to him to put him on that cross. And how many of you who say, who just believe, wrestle with that? That I'm the one who put him there. No, you hide under this, well, we've all sinned, right? And yes, we all have, but what about you? See, you won't deal with your own personal sins that put Jesus Christ on the cross. But no, you want to climb up some other way, don't you? Verse 10 again, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, church building people, you know, they're Jesuit trained cemeterians like John MacArthur and Justin Peters. Okay, those guys, hirelings, okay? But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And go to verse 25 and 26, right across the page. Jesus answered them, I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. They, and and uh, beginning at verse um, uh, 22, they came up to him. It's like, um, how long will you make us doubt? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Uh, Oy vey. He already did. But they believe not. See. Verse 18 again. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partakers, partaker with adulterers. Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 10. Here's another, you know, admonition about giving. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that warn your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Remember, God will supply all your need, not your greed. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Friend of the world, by wanting the things of the world, lusting after the things of the world. We are to set our minds on heavenly things. For when our Lord rewards us with inheritance, not down here. 
Do ye think the scripture saith in vain, the spirit, that's a lowercase s, that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Notice that's a lowercase s. What is that talking about? The spirit of man, which is relegated to what? The flesh. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, unless you are totally submitted unto God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, only through him can you resist the devil. Those of you who are fake, well, obviously you're serving your father the devil anyway. But see, those of you lost people out there, try to resist the devil. You can't do that unless you have the Lord within you and the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Okay. Resisting the devil is hinged upon you. Submitting yourselves, therefore, to God. You know, dive in head first. And you know, once you give all of you unto the God who has given all unto you, doesn't remove you from temptation. Every man is tempted, absolutely. It doesn't remove you from sin. No, because you're still going to sin, because sin has been relegated to the flesh, okay? The sinful flesh, okay? It doesn't remove you from that, no. But see, when you give your all unto the Lord who has given you all, submitting, then you have him. Again, how many of you are holding back? We're keeping back just a little bit and either fearful or too proud to dive in with all things. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. See, we're supposed to keep our minds stayed on heavenly things, not on things of this earth. Where it says in verse 18 here in Psalm 50, When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Devils are friends of this world. Well, obviously, because you serve the God of this world. The little G God of this world, Satan. Because you saw that he goes up some other way to glorify your own flesh. Because it's all about the flesh to the devil and to those who serve him. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. He shall lift you up. Quit holding back, brother, sister. Quit holding back. Verse 19 on to verse 20, now in Psalm 50. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thine, thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. While we're here in James, let's read James verses 3 on to verse 13. Talking about the foul mouths that these devils have. You know, upon the Lord saving you, one of the first things that ought to be cleansed is that filthy, stinking mouth. Things happen. Slip-ups occur. Absolutely. 
Like I've said to you before, I once a while ago dropped a couch on my toe and uttered a profanity, okay? And blood was all over and I was more upset about the fact that I had uttered a profanity rather than the fact that I bludgeoned my toe and it was bleeding everywhere, okay? Slip-ups happen. They do. But see, there are devils out there <laughs> who have this facade of being sweet, innocent people but when they're scratched a little and undercover, they're cursing all the way to heaven. Their curses are reaching up to the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. James chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 13. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among all among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Note that in verse 8, no man can tame the tongue. That's why you need the Lord. The Lord can contain your tongue. Because you have the Lord in you. He is witness. He lives within you. He doesn't want to hear that stuff coming out of you. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God, spirit, soul, and body. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Also remember, brethren, about what it says in the book of Job, about um, neither have I... Um, brought sin upon me by wishing a curse to his soul. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You shall know them by their fruits. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Knowledge. Knowing the scriptures. So if you're a wise man, what does that mean? You're one who fears the Lord. And let us not forget in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt, decayed, putrid, rank. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, let's read verse 21 in Psalm 50. These things hast thou done, and kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. Yeah, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order, 
before thine eyes. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Let's read verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. You devils, you don't fear God. Not at all. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. Romans chapter 1, of course. Of course, you knew that. Didn't you? Romans chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 25. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, because it wasn't here, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Foolish. What is a fool? A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? So, looking at verse 21, they knew God. Just hear. Just believe. Okay? They glorified him not as God. Not down here in the heart. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves wise, they became fools. You say you fear the Lord, huh? But in works you deny him. And we've been called, those of us at the church of the living God, onto those good works. Now for our salvation but that he may be glorified through them. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature, men, more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. Because you put God on your own level. Beg your pardon. And you do that because you don't fear God. The God of all. Who has given all. Because of all that you have done unto him. And only if you are truly saved of the church of the living God. See, when he brings you onto himself in salvation, he gives you that acknowledgement of the magnitude of what you have done to him. And that breaks you. 
that breaks you. See, and what's even more horrific is these devils whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. They know full well what, the, a lot of them, they know full well what they're doing. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Your, your damnation is just. May God's judgment rest upon you. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 58 on to 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 58 on to verse 68. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. And this, the fear of the Lord, fearing the Lord, is not undone in this dispensation. But no. Absolutely not. Remember that. See, that's another thing that these easy believism heretics like to remove out of the equation because they have no fear of God themselves. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Is that a good connotation there? I don't think so. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance, like, for example, America, long rejected the God of the Scriptures. Long. Here's a, here we go. <laughs> Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. You know, First Chronicles chapters 1 on to verse 15 basically deal with the genealogies. Uh, I confess that even, you know, going on 13 years of the Lord having saved me, which is coming up on the 28th this month. Um, I will get to First Chronicles, and uh, when I read the scriptures, I read aloud, okay? Um, after reading just like one chapter between verses, uh, chapters 1 and 15, it's like, uh, my tongue wants to fall out. And, you know, when I read those, it's like, you know, Lord, it's here in the scriptures for a reason, the genealogy thing, whatever, it's your word. It's there for a reason. I don't get it, but it's there. Praise you. You know what? The, you know what? Think about this. Okay? Verse 62. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude. That was promised to Abraham, by the way. Because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Think about this. The genealogies in 1 Chronicles uh, chapters 1 on to verse 15 are given you in number in great detail. Whereas it says here, whereas you were the stars of heaven for multitude. Do you get it? Where stars of heaven in multitude couldn't count them. But yet in 1 Chronicles verse, uh, chapters 1 on to verse 15, there they are. Get a load of that. Let's continue. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. 
and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations thou shalt find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of life, of thy life. Uh, does this not sound like he's reproving? In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto the enemies, for unto your enemies, excuse me, for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. Remember how he said he will choose their he will choose your delusions if you decide to go against our Lord. <laughs> These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Yeah. Verse 22 in Psalm 50. Now, consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Deuteronomy, while we're here, chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, beginning at verse 39 on to verse 41. And this is something we all need to remember, even you devils, who it is we all have to do with all we have to do with. We who are of the church of the living God, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Those of you who are lost, the devils, your coadjutors, you're going to stand before the great white throne of judgment. Let's get ourselves a whole lot of the fear of the Lord, shall we? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39 on verse 41. See now that I, even I, am he. Uh, our Lord Jesus said, uh, Christ said, unless thou believe that I am he, you'll die in your sins, meaning God the Father. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Stop. You Don't look at me. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. Read it slowly to yourself right now. Go ahead. Now, the, the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? I 
I kill. And I make alive. I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Lost person. If you have breath today, it is because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has allowed you to have it because of his long suffering. You devils that are uh, prating yourself against the Lord, you're just heaping coals of fire upon your head. You're making your judgment worse for you. Okay, that's all you're doing, serving your father, the devil. But see, he's allowing it. He is the God of all. Do you really begin? I, I, can we even begin to grasp who it is and what he is? The God of all? who measures the earth by the span of his hand. How great is our God? How often do we muse upon this, brethren? And see, reading verse 39 alone, just that alone, we're going to read to verse 41, but reading that alone, that ought to change your shorts a little bit about abstaining from all appearance of evil. You know, what's his our reasonable service? Yeah. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. That includes yourself. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. You're preaching easy believism. You hate the Lord. You're his enemy. Because you're magnifying flesh. You're magnifying yourself. Which is what Catholicism is, by the way. A religion of flesh. Flesh glorification. Go to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 8 on to verse 13. Oh, let's read verse 22 again. In Psalm 50. Now consider this, ye that forget God. You lost. Lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Also you could say, those who have quenched the Spirit, living in sin. Bring forth the blind, uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 8 on to verse 13. Beg your pardon. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Blind people who see and deaf who can hear. Uh, don't people of this world call those of us who are of the church of the living God that we can't see or hear the truth of things? We're not enlightened, so to speak, because um, we're, you know, we, we're kind of old fashioned. We adhere to a book. Let all the nations be gathered, let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Bring everybody together. Keep reading. Who among them can declare this and shew us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. 
Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. You were wondering why I didn't mention that when we looked at verses 10 and verse 13, right? This is why, okay? Verse 12. Uh, let's read verse 10 again. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. For me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. That includes yourself, you know. I have declared, and have saved, and I have shewed, when there was no strange God among you, Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. And who shall let it? Hinder it. Ooh, boy, you think you're gonna stop uh, you think you're gonna stop the Lord, huh? Huh? Oh, you might, you devils can probably, can attack a messenger and get rid of messengers, whatever. You ain't going to stop the Lord. You're not going to stop the Lord. And go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 25. Uh, let's read verse 22 in Psalm 50 again. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Uh, verses 21 on to verse 25 in Jeremiah chapter 5. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Don't fear the Lord, not saved. And without understanding to depart from evil, which have eyes and see not, but yet you guys claim you can see, which have ears and hear not. Interesting. This whole video... Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? <laughs> Stop right there, okay? You and I, brother, sister, caught up, you die, go before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. John fell at his feet as dead. Yeah. It's not going to be this bro hug thing that so many of these hirelings tell you. No. No. Will you not tremble at my presence? Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. This people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. Neither say they in their heart. See, you fakes. It's all up here. It's all up here. It ain't there. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. And again, latter rain is referring unto the future fulfillment and blessing of Israel. Already covered that, what those wicked charismatics do, so I'm not going to get off on that. He reserveth 
unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. For your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Verse 22 in Psalm 50. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise, verse 23 in Psalm 50, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Now see, there are many people out there who can do this fake uh, praise. Okay? I'll give you an example of that. Go to Isaiah chapter 29. You know, you, you see them a lot in these... Uh, uh, church buildings they with this stupid um, heavy, hard rock Christian music okay um, like a like my friend that sticketh closer than a brother has said uh, his sister um, my sister his auntie once said that you know hearing um, praise music her head was bowed not this. Reverence, godly sorrow, fear of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. There are many out there who can do this false praise. Wherefore, uh, Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. There are a lot of people who can fake praise out there. And you look at verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in dark. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? The Lord does. You know, in my time that I myself went to church buildings and they played that, you know, always the same way. Let us, let us, start, let us praise the Lord with all their modern rock music that they would. Um, people would stand up and do the clapping and stuff. It's like, I never did that. I never. It's like, you guys are a bunch of superficial, you know. For their works are done to be seen of men. I think Jack Hiles himself once said that if you keep your praises good, you'll still be doing good or something like that to that effect. See, let's, let's, let's have the scriptures speak on this instead of me. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Okay. Now, we want Psalm 119, Beth. You don't know what that is? Psalm 119, Beth? Psalm 119, Beth. We're going to read all of Beth. Okay? And for those of you who do not have the Hebraic uh, markings within Psalm 119, there are such a scriptures out there that do, do not have that. The uh, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Galeth. There are some, uh, the one that my wife uses, your sister, the super giant print one doesn't have them. At least not that I'm aware of, but there are some out there. Beth is verses 9 on to verse 16. Psalm 119, Beth, verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. I've been asked before, how do you hide God's word in your heart? If 
you ask that, you need to really consider whether or not you are truly saved. Because you know what? I cannot explain it to you. But see, those of you of the Church of the Living God, brother and sister, you know right away what that means. You know what verse 11 means. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. But if you have to ask a fallible man, how do you do that? There are some things, brethren, that cannot be explained to people. Especially those who call themselves Christians. How do you, how do you, how do you hide God's word in your heart? I can't explain that to you. I can't. If you are saved, you'll know what that means. You'll get it. But if you ain't saved, and there are those, well, God knows your heart. Yeah, he, and he knows it's wicked. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. If you come across someone who is calling themselves a Christian and they ask that of you, it's like, I can't explain that to you, man. I can't explain it to you. Because that's something that the Lord gives his own. That you have hid his word in your heart. That I might not sin against thee. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. What is that unction? The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. A pearl of great price. The authorized version of the scriptures. The word of God. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The God of all, who has given all on the cross for all that you did to him. All you got to do is allow him to break you. I'm going to tell you something. When the Lord breaks you, and you get it. That godly sorrow for what he, for what you did to him to put him on that and the magnitude of what he did for you in spite of what you did to him to put him on that cross. See, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. See, you and me, brother, sister, we get it. The fake you ain't never going to get it. Unless you repent. Which is something that you preach against. Verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts. And have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Oh, you can quench the spirit within you, can't you, while you're indulging in sin. But what happens after you've fulfilled your lust, your sin? You feel like 200 showers with all the lava soap, that's a pumice soap, can't wash you clean enough, can it? 
See, the broken, the contrite, the saved are the only ones who are even capable of truly praising our Lord. There are many out there who can give a fake praise. But I will submit unto you, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, and every devil and lost individual out there. How can you praise someone whom you have overridden with your own self? Meaning you are your own God, knowing good and evil. You are your own Savior because it's because you believe. How can ye believe? Those of you who seek honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Only those of us of the church of the living God can truly praise God. The Lord. All the fake out there, your praise is superficial. That's it. It's stupid. It's a shoe that dances and struts its stuff upon the stage to be seen of no more. It is the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. That's Shakespeare, by the way. Kind of paraphrased. <laughs> but now, let's, let's finish this on the most appropriate thing. Psalm 147. The last five psalms 46, 47, 48, 49, 50 are all praise. The last five begin with praise ye Lord, praise ye Lord, praise ye Lord. The last five, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Five is the number of death. When we see our end nearing, you know, you have finished the course, you have fought a good fight, you have kept the faith, The older you get in the Lord, the more you will praise Him. It is not a coincidence. And I've spoke to several of you about this who know what I'm referring to. Some of you know. There's something to be reckoned. There is something too that the last five Psalms in the book of Psalms all say praise ye the Lord and that five is the number of death. There's something to that. We won't get into that right now. But uh, in Psalm 50, verse 23, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. You glorify God because he is the one who has saved you, not you saved yourself. And to him that ordereth his conversational right will I shew the salvation of God. Meaning, you line yourself up with the scriptures and the Lord will use you up there as his ambassador. But see, you got to give your give all of yourself unto the God of all. See, because God loveth a cheerful giver, remember? And your sacrifices that he asks of you, you know, a broken and contrite heart, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, that kind of stuff. Is it, you know, to abstain from certain things? It's for your benefit. That he may be glorified. Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart. 
and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. He calleth them all by their names. He calleth them by name. Come up hither. Great is our Lord, and great and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. In Re uh, Revelation chapter 13, the Lord lifteth up the meek, and the wicked casteth down to the ground. Hmm. The Lord lifteth up the meek, verse 6. The redemption of the purchase, purchase possession cast it down, cast it the wicked down to the ground when Satan gets cast out of heaven. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Remember how we were looking at in the New Testament to begin this video? And I said it would come into play later. Who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. Remember, raven is, it was an unclean bird. Remember that. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. Are you looking at that verse right now? Verse 11. This whole video can be hinged right here. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Hey, there's still hope. There's still hope. Don't you for one second think that you're beyond. Don't think that. What does that verse say? The Lord, beg your pardon, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. You still have breath today? There's hope for you. Don't forget that. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. His word will not return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he proposeth, proposes it will do. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. His wind He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord.
Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Verse 11 in Psalm 147. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Amen. Amen. He is the God of all. And you wicked devils and those of you who are lost, it is only God's sheer mercy and long-suffering that you have today. How are you going to spend this day? You know, those who have made the, their choice, who are servants of the devil, their father, Satan, those of you who are lost and are not, you know, who haven't made your choice. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. The only reason why you're alive is because the Lord has allowed it. The only reason why you eat is because the Lord has allowed that to happen. He is either God of all or the God of nothing. There is no middle ground. There is no shade of gray like the enemies of our Lord like so much. Ugh, yes. Which are the enemies of our Lord like so much to paint the shade of gray. He's either the God of all or the God of nothing. Is he the God of all unto you? It's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully this uh, Lord's will be done. Uh, hopefully this might help one of you. Um, hopefully. And um, again, to all of you, the Church of the Living God, the Lord reward you for your sweet charity. We love you. Praise be the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you so much for watching if you do. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye sister.